Hi everyone. So we are looking now at Lesson Master 610. This was the last page in that homework packet that I gave you on Thursday um, that you're hopefully finishing up over the weekend. Um, and I'm probably just going to talk about a couple of different problems here in this video um, to give you an idea of what it is you're trying to do with each of these problems. Hopefully, if you were gone the day we learned this lesson, I had quite a few people absent. I think that would have been um, Wednesday when we learned this. Um, you're watching this video. Okay, because that'll be a good primer for you. If us going over the homework that day wasn't enough for you, hopefully this will do it for you. Okay, so I want to go over, um, let's see, either four or five. Mm, let's just try four, see what happens. Um, because I want to talk about these three different questions that you're asked. So first of all, you're asked to evaluate the discriminant. Remember that the discriminant, is calculated by doing b squared minus 4ac. Oh, I guess you can be done looking at my face now. Um, so for something like number 4, I'm going to do negative 3 squared minus 4 times a, which is 15, times c, which is 7. Okay, those parentheses are important. So I have negative 3 squared minus 4 times 15 times 7. And I get negative 411. Okay, so that's the value of the discriminant. That's what the discriminant actually equals. Now I will tell you, most of the time we don't actually care about what the discriminant equals. We care about whether it's positive, negative, or zero. Because that's what tells us this, the number of real solutions. A negative discriminant means you have no real solutions because you can't take a square root of a negative number. And if you have no real solutions, you can't tell whether they're rational or irrational. So actually, I guess that means I'm going to do number five also because I want to do one where, where we talk about part C, and I'm guessing number five will have an answer for part C. Okay, so let's do part A, discriminant again. So discriminant would be negative 11 squared minus 4 times 15 times negative 14. Negative 11 squared, whoops, minus 4 times 15 times negative 14. I get 961. So that is a positive discriminant. And because I can take a square root of it, I'm going to have two real solutions here. Okay, so positive I get 2, negative I get 0. The only time you're going to get just 1 is if it comes out to be exactly 0, if the discriminant comes out to be exactly 0. So now I want to know, are they rational or irrational? And what that's really asking is, if I were to go through the whole quadratic formula with this and actually find the roots, would the answers come out as clean, happy whole numbers, or would they come out as crazy decimals that go on and on forever? Okay, and here's how you tell that. That's controlled by that square root in the quadratic formula, and this is the number that's going to be living under the square root, okay? So if I were to do the quadratic formula, you don't really have to do the whole thing, but it would look like this, 11 plus or minus the square root of, and I already know this is the number that comes from under the square root, over 2 times 15, so it'll be over 2, over 30. Um, if it were going to be irrational, the only way it would come out to be irrational is if this came out to be irrational. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the square root of that 961 and see what happens. See how I got, oh, you can't really see. I got 31 as my square root. So that means when I go to do the quadratic formula, it would be 11 plus or minus 31 over 30. Now, this might come out to be a decimal answer just because the numbers don't divide evenly, but it's not going to come out to be irrational because this did not come out to be an irrational decimal. This came out nice and clean and pretty. So that means my answers are going to be rational. Okay, because when I took the square root of 961, I got a nice clean number. Now let's say you've got a discriminant of 250, okay? When I do the square root of 250, I get this crazy decimal, okay? And that means that crazy decimal is going is to make its way into the formula and make my answers be crazy decimals too. And that's when you would say it's irrational. So to answer this question, to answer part C, go back to part A 
and take a square root and see how your numbers come out. If they're nice and clean and pretty, it's rational. If they're crazy decimals, it's irrational. Okay? So just real quick, 6 through 11, I want you to notice the directions. This says the number of real solutions, which is the same as part B back here, number of real solutions. This asks for the number of x-intercepts. Um, I could also ask you for the number of roots. Okay, that would be a valid question. All of those questions are asking the same thing. They're asking this. Okay, they're asking how many answers am I going to get if I do the quadratic formula. Okay, and so all I really have to do is the discriminant. But you have to remember that before you can do the discriminant, you need to be in standard form. So for both of these sections, for all of this, okay, 6 through 11, you're going to find the discriminant. Now, you don't have to write down the discriminant. That's not actually part of your answer. And then you're going to say 2, 1, or 0. Remember, if it's positive, you're going to have 2. If it's negative, you're going to have 0. And if it comes out to be exactly 0, you're going to have just one solution. Okay, so this is what you're saying is an answer. Now, for all of them, again, you're going to have to put them in standard form first, and that might take a little bit of work, okay? But um, that's how you would tackle something like that. Okay, I'm going to do one more quick video to sort of give an overview of 12 and 13. Um, I'm not going to do them completely for you because I do want you to think about them on your own, but I'll at least get you started on them. Okay, so stay tuned for that.